Hello, I am just back from an absolutely amazing weekend at the photography show. I've had an absolute blast there, I have to say. Not only did I get to walk the entire length of the show, looking at all the technology, the cameras, the bags, and everything else that went along with it, but I had some amazing conversations with some amazing people. I met a whole bunch of fellow photographers who are working in totally different environments and different genres using different technologies and different processes. I learned an absolute stack and it was a real pleasure having conversations with these people. But more than that, it was also a great opportunity for me to get to speak to you, some of my followers. Thank you, thank you so much for everyone who stopped and introduced yourself and then had a, allowed me to have a conversation with you. It was really fantastic. I really enjoyed hearing what you're up to, why you were at the show, the types of photographs that you were taking. I really appreciate all the kind words that you let, that shared with me as well, uh, saying how much you enjoyed the content. It, it, just, it just means the world to me, because not only did I get to meet you, but it also gives me that extra bit of encouragement to carry on with the channel and keep on producing content. So again, thank you so much for stopping by, saying hello or stopping me as I was walking up and down. I really did appreciate every single minute of those conversations. Now, one of the other reasons I was at the photography show was that the PhotoSpeed team asked me to do a talk on printing on the stand on Sunday. So I was up on stage talking about my prints like this one here you can see behind me. Now, I appreciate that some of you might not have been able to make it that day, perhaps you're at the show a different day, or perhaps you just weren't able to make the show at all. So in this video, it's gonna be my opportunity to share with you the entire talk. But before we jump into that, I just wanna send out some thanks. First of all, thank you to everyone who came along to the talk on the Sunday and offered some support and asked questions. I really do appreciate everyone who came along to see me do that. And I also want to send out some extra thanks to a couple of fellow vloggers. First of all, Chris Sale, who took lots of still images of me while I was doing my talk. Um, I've got some of those over my blog article that goes along with this video. Thank you, Chris. And also thank you to Gareth Danks, who, thanks to his work with this camera here, um, filmed my talk. A uh, camera he's never used before, but he's done an absolutely sterling job of capturing the entire talk. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Gareth. And thank you to everyone who came along to watch my talk. But I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm gonna hand over to my talk at the photography show. I do hope you enjoy it. And if you've got any questions or comments, please do leave those below. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the photography show and the photo speed stand. Um, really happy to be here. It's uh, very exciting to be doing a talk here. And um, before I start though, just to let you know a few things that are happening at the photo speed stand. Obviously, if you're here for a few days, well, you missed out on a cracking day yesterday, if you were here or not here, I should say. Um, but there's some really good talks this afternoon. We've got Matt Hardy uh, and Joe Cornish. So if you like, like your landscape photography, you should really stick around for that. Uh, and then on Monday and Tuesday, sorry, stand over here. Um, I'm not going to be here, but there'll be another person doing the MC in, and there's a really great lineup of talks. So if you're about tomorrow or even the next couple of days, be sure to come round to the stand. Uh, the other thing is there's plenty of... Uh, offers on in the papers as well. I'm going to be talking a few about some of the papers that I've used to print here. So I'll highlight some of those. Um, but also check out the Instagram wall it's around there as well. There's some really uh, really good pictures for, from, from people that have um, been using the photo speed tag. But I hopefully you're all here to listen to me talk. Okay, so my talk today is I'm going to talk about the importance and joy of printing at home. It's something I'm particularly passionate about, is printing. Um, I think it's a fantastic way to display your work. Um, and I want to try and hopefully encourage some of you um, that maybe haven't printed at home before to maybe give it a try. Maybe you've been put off uh, by some of the costs or some of the technicalities um, that go along with printing. And we're hopefully going to go through those and uh, see if we can inspire you to hit that print button. So maybe just as a quick show of hands, is there anyone printing at home at all? At the moment, a few of you. Anyone got a printer at home but not printing? <laughs> there always one, isn't there? Uh, and is anyone actually interested in, in sort of maybe something they might want to do in the future? Good, right. Hopefully, I can inspire. Uh, hopefully, I can inspire Gareth to use his printer, and hopefully, <laughs> inspire a few of you that don't already print at home uh, to do a better printing. Okay. So, just in case there's a few of you, um, well, that's better, maybe more than a few of you who don't know who I am, um, I'm Julian Baird. I'm a landscape photographer from Devon. Um, I've been a sort of passionate 
photographer maybe for about 10 years. It's probably, probably nearer to 15 now, I'd say. Um, as you can probably tell from the accent, though, I'm not Devon born and bred. I was actually grew up in Scotland, uh, where I spent my formative years uh, in the West Highlands, actually. And, uh, and I spent a bit of time in Glasgow. And I guess that's where my photography journey started. I started quite, quite late with photography. But it wasn't really until I moved down to Devon that it really became a, a, a real passion in my life and an all, all time consuming uh, interest of mine. It's nothing to do with actually moving to Devon, it just happens to be uh, the way it is. Um, and I think my passion for landscape photography really comes from being having a love of the outdoors. So you can see that picture there, that rather cheesy picture there. That's me on the uh, Isle of Harris, just not far from Luskin Tire Beach. It was a wet, wild, very windy, pretty miserable day, enough to keep most people indoors. Uh, but I was actually in my element. I was absolutely having a fantastic time, as, as maybe that picture uh, <laughs> demonstrates. So really, my landscape photography is, is, is born out of my passion to be outdoors and uh, in, in nature. Um, and my, my, when it comes to photography, I'm a big fan of the entire process, really. Everything from uh, going out there and planning my shoots, going out there and capturing images, post-processing them, sharing them on social media, and obviously actually making that final print at the end. That's a really important part of the process for me, is to actually make that final print. Uh, and being a, a passionate printer is probably a good thing because I'm going to talk to you about printing today. Uh, the other thing I do as well is, as you can probably tell, I like to talk about photography. So I've got a YouTube channel where I share a lot of my uh, photography adventures and uh, things that I do with uh, sorry, uh, the printing. So you can see a little video running there. Um, so I talk about printing, landscape photography, all sorts of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm pretty invested in photography, I think it's fair to say. So this is uh, one of my images I'm gonna share with you. You can see it there uh, printed on the matte paper. Now anyone who's even got half an interest and landscape photography will recognize that mountain. Uh, can anyone tell me what it is? <laughs> I don't know why I invited you. <laughs> yes, it's Brookletton Moor, that's right, in Glen Etif, uh, Glen, Etif, Glen uh, Glencoe. It's a mountain that is probably one of the most photographed mountains in, in Scotland. That, does, that wouldn't stop me ever photographing it. It's a big triangular pyramid shaped one that you, everyone sees as you drive through Glencoe. Absolutely spectacular. This actual peak here, this is called Stop Derg. Uh, the, the range itself is called Bucolective Moor. Uh, and the morning I took this picture, it was a couple of years ago. I had a, it was a very dark, very snowy start to the walk. Uh, I almost didn't go. I was uh, quite put off by the weather. I, I didn't think I, sh I should go up, but um, I did go up and I sat up there for a little while waiting for the morning light to come and the snow cleared and I got that nice beam of light there on the top of Stop Derg. It was one of those magic moments in photography where everything seems to go your way. Things are really simple, uh, they didn't need any filters. You're just picking out compositions and taking pictures. It was a pre pretty special morning. Actually, it was a morning of my birthday, so I felt, I felt I got a proper little birthday treat for that one. Uh, and also, this image just recently got a commended award in uh, Scottish Landscape Photography Year, uh, which makes me incredibly proud, being a Scot, taking pictures off Scotland, and to be in a, a book from Scotland. So, uh, yeah, that's a, a pretty special moment for me and one I'm very proud of. So why was I inspired to print? Um, I think really, I, I wanted to get into printing really from reading books. So you can see a picture there of my bookshelf. That's just a small portion of my bookshelf. It seems to be an ever expanding bookshelf. I'm constantly buying books and reading books. But really ever since I started in photography, I was buying books, looking at pictures, being inspired by the photographs that I saw. But more than that, I felt I'm, I'm more, uh, more engagement with a picture by looking at it in a book and in print form than I ever did by just looking at it on a website. I, I thought it was pretty special and it really inspired my landscape photography. And then really from on, following on from that, you can see a couple of books there. I've got Wildlife Photography of the Year and Landscape Photography of the Year. And I go and see the exhibitions. So I go to the Natural History Museum, look at these pictures and I see them on the wall and I see them all lit and I just thought it looked really special. And I thought, well, one day I want to see one of my photographs up there like that. So it's really been, it's not only inspired me to print, but it's really inspired my photography as well. And then as my photography got better, I started submitting my images to magazines like Outdoor Photography Magazine, which I think is a, a really good magazine because it's printed very well. Uh, and then finally seeing my images in a magazine, I thought, well, no, I think I, 
I don't know, just want to submit images to magazines and then wait to maybe be selected one month to see an image. I want to take control of that and I want to start, if I want to print an image, I want to be able to print it straight away. Uh, so this is just uh, another one of my images. Uh, this is one. Uh, this is one of the ones that was in the magazine. This is of Dawlish Warren, the long exposure. Uh, Dawlish Warren Beach is a beach that's very close to me, so I really like going shooting there because you can shoot it in all sorts of conditions. Um, you can't actually get this shot anymore. These groins here, they were all replaced a couple of years ago as part of a beach management scheme, which didn't work. Um, and but you've you kind of lost the, the special because they're quite uniform and they flow into the sea. Um, so it's unfortunate. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique image in the sense that um, you can't get it anymore. So where did, where did my printing journey actually start? Well, I started right here at the photography show back in uh, 2017, a couple of years ago. I'd made the decision that I was going to buy a printer. So I think I think I decided already that I was buying the Canon. Um, so sorry, Epsom people. Um, so I picked the, the, the printer up and uh, I, I remember it came in quite a big box, it came in a trolley, and I was wheeling the trolley out, and of course the trolley broke under the weight of the, uh, of the printer, so fortunately I had my father-in-law there, and he gave me a hand out, uh, and we managed to get it back to the car. So back home, I uh, started unboxing the printer, and because I'm a vlogger, and I like to talk, and I like to make videos, what's the first thing I did? I create a video about it, sharing my experience. You know, everyone loves an unboxing video, don't they? I think. Um, and uh, that video was called Discovering the Joy of Printing. And that really kind of summarized uh, the experience for me. It was that getting the printer unboxed, setting it up, selecting a couple of images to print, and then hitting that print button, and then watching the image feed out the printer for the first time. It was quite a, a, quite a magic moment. And I think also there was quite a lot of engagement in the video as well, which I was quite surprised about. Because at the time, most of my channel had been about going out and taking landscape pictures. But then all of a sudden, people had seemed to have a real interest in printing. People were asking questions and, and sharing their thoughts and how their experiences have been with printing. So it seemed to be a topic that seemed to, to, to resonate with people. So this is the very first image that I printed uh, on my Canon Pixima Pro. This is, uh, you can see it down there in the corner of that. This is um, Chavot's Head in Cornwall. It's one of my favorite coastal locations. It seems to work in a, it seems to work when the weather's worse. It can get quite windy there. Um, but the thing I found when I printed this image, I really liked this image anyway. Uh, you know, I, thought, I always thought it looked good on screen, but it wasn't until I first printed it off and it came to, it almost came to life. And I actually, I actually thought it looked better when it, when it was printed. I was amazed actually by the detail, I'll get too close there. I was amazed by the detail that you could still see from the print in the rocks and the textures and the graduations of, of the colors really impressed me. Um, for the eagle-eyed of you out there, you'll notice this isn't a picture of a landscape. Um, when I first got the printer, I wanted to do some black and white printing as well. And I don't typically shoot a lot of black and white landscapes, um, but what I do do, what I do shoot is uh, during the sort of longer winter months when there's not much landscape photography to do, I do a bit of live music photography, um, I've shot Radio 1's Big Weekend, Coldplay, Mumford & Sons, so I've I, I done it for about five or six years, kind of a, almost as like a side project. Anyway, this picture here, this is um, taken at the Beautiful Days Festival a couple of years ago. This is a band called Reef, you might remember them from 90s, early 2000s, some of that. I just love his face, I thought it was a great capture. And that was another fantastic image just to print out in black and white. All the colours came out, sorry not the colours, all, all the depths of the blacks and the contrasts. It was just a really um, spectacular image. Okay, so obviously those first two prints, they, they really kind of got me hooked. Um, so I thought, well, I need to, need to carry this on. And obviously I made another video, didn't I? So uh, this one was quite becoming a passionate photographer. And what I was found is that I was starting to move on from the very basic elements of printing, and I was starting to experiment with uh, different paper types and different paper sizes. Um, one of the first ones I got, I was actually reading Outdoor Photography Magazine, this is how I found out about Photospeed papers, was they had an advert for panoramic papers, and I thought that looked, that looked really interesting, that's so ordered a test pack of that, and printed off my first uh, panoramic image. And that's actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd thing, I didn't used to take a lot of panoramic images, 
But when I actually got the uh, panoramic paper, it kind of inspired me to say, well, maybe I should print more um, or make more panoramic images. The, the thing with panoramic photographs is they look quite good. And the problem is your laptop screen or your uh, monitor it's not really designed for displaying a panoramic image. But when you put it on a panoramic bit of paper, it really comes to life. And then started looking at the uh, different uh, test packs of paper. So paper choice can be quite a confusing thing when you first start out printing. There's an awful lot of mats and glosses and semi-gloss. So the matte papers were actually a fantastic way for me to actually start experimenting more with papers and trying to understand which types of my images go with which papers. So, um, so if, you, if you're kind of new and you're looking at getting into papers, go around the corner there, pick up a few test packs. I think they're, they're doing special offers on them at the moment, so I, I recommend that really is a great way for, to try out lots of different papers without uh, buying a big 25-pack uh, box. Uh, the other thing I started learning how to do, really I was learning a whole new skill set actually. I uh, started learning about frames, started putting my pictures in frames, started putting them in mounts. So I did all this myself, I didn't make the mounts, but um, I printed all the images and put them all in the mounts myself. So it was really interesting because I was learning a whole bunch of new skills. And really for me now, the photographic process isn't complete until I've made a print. And I, I, I will print just about everything. So if I've gone out and done a shoot, I will print an image. So that, regardless of whether I think that's an amazing image and I want to share it on social media and I want to make a print of it, or I don't think it's a good image, I will still print it out. Because I still think it's, it's worthwhile. And I'll come on to when I talk about some of the benefits and why I think you should print at home, why it's important to print images you might not even consider sharing anyway. So this is another one of my images, I think it's down there, yeah, uh, that's on, uh, this is a picture of uh, Holm Bridge in, in Dartmoor, uh, autumn, which is quite a rare thing for me, um, though autumn is a season, most landscape photographers will tell you that there's probably only about a one or two week window where the colours are really at their best, for some reason I always miss it, uh, but last year was one of those fortunate years where I actually made it out and I managed to capture some of the, the autumn colours. The river's a bit high in this one, so I couldn't quite get into the position I wanted, but uh, I think it's uh, still, still a nice picture. But I printed it off in the uh, Photospeed's new legacy gloss paper, which is real nice. So, but by all means, when you uh, when I finish talking, go up there and have a look at that as well. Uh, it's a really nice paper. Wow, is that a bad picture? Right. Can you discover the joy of printing? Is printing for everybody else? Yes, you can. I, I think anyone can be uh, can print at home but there's always a but there's always a but isn't there uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the reasons people will give for not printing at home and maybe we'll just have a, a quick chat about them and hopefully put some of those uh, reasons to the side so the first one everyone talks about is cost ink it's like liquid gold isn't it um, but I've, I've, I've obviously printed these images so I've got the same image here this is Bellstone Common on Dartmoor one stormy morning and the image on the right there is the one that you can see down there so that's that again that's printed on legacy gloss paper it's mounted in the frame and I think that that probably cost me about 10 pounds to make but the vast majority of that cost is actually the mount not the actual print itself the print itself probably only cost me roughly about a couple of quid so it's about the, about the price of a cup of coffee and when I put that in put, personally when I put that in perspective to the rest of the cost of the target I, I spent more on petrol getting to um, Bellstone Common they did that to making a print but that's not to say that I'm not, I'm not trying to make out that ink was cheap but you don't have to do it like that I mean I always have done it there for display purposes so that's why I've, I've invested that now the, we've got the same image here on the left now this was printed using my office printer so it's just a Canon MB5350 I think it is so it's a standard office jet printer used for faxing does anyone do faxing? yeah? you do still do faxing Chris? good man um, but it does, you know, it does copy and all that it's, a, it's an office printer so you've got three colour inks and a black ink now I'm not going to try and stand here and tell you that that looks the same as that it's obviously it's the same photograph but it's not the same quality but you don't have to be printing like that to still get benefit from your photography so really no matter what printer that you have you don't have to go out and buy a ProGraph 1000 or even a Pixma Pro if you've got a printer at home and you just use it for printing off your document. That was just printed on Canon's own um, photo paper, so it was really simple. And we'll talk about more about the benefits of why it will improve your photography later, but I think it's just uh, 
provide an example here that you don't need to have the most expensive printer and you don't need to be producing images that you, you think, I'm not going to print until it's ready to go in the gallery. I think um, missing a bit of a trick. Uh, the other challenge with printing is where am I going to put all these images? It's great that I've got this lovely display board here, but I can't imagine very many people have got these in their home. So what am I going to do with these prints if I make them jolly in? Well, I've got a couple of solutions. Um, at home, I'm not allowed to display my work anywhere in the house, apart from my small office that I've got. Um, so I have to be quite ingenious about how I do this. I mean, I'd love to have all that around the house, but no chance. So the, the white shelf you see there in the top, uh, that's called a picture ledge. It's from that well-known Swedish furniture company you might all be aware of. Relatively well, pretty inexpensive it is actually. It just screws into the wall. But the good thing about the picture ledge, in a very small period, uh, space, of, uh, very small space, it's got this little ledge, this ridge that runs down the middle of it. And what that allows you to do is you can just take a print and you can sit it on the shelf and it just fits nicely into that little groove there. So without having to frame anything or drill any holes in walls or fine frames, fine mounts, you don't need to do any of that and you can still display it on a wall where you can see it. And they come in a variety of different lengths. So you really don't need a lot of space. Uh, obviously it also works for frame, frame prints as well. So I, again, I don't really put holes in my wall to hang up my frame prints. I just put them on the pictures. And that gives me a lot of flexibility as well. I can print off lots of different images, lots of different sizes. I can change the order. I can move stuff about. I can do all sorts of stuff. If you're really, really short of space, you should still print. Now these are 10 by 15 centimeters that is. I think that's six by four in old money. Um, just really small prints. And I do this quite a lot. I'll print these images off and I'll just leave them lying about. So um, if this is in front of my computer keyboard. So every time I sit down at the computer, waiting for my computer to boot up, or if you've got a laptop and you've got a little desk area, just leave them lying about. And while you're waiting for your computer to boot up, go spend time looking at that rather than waiting for the Mac logo or the Windows logo to spin up. So it's all about getting eye contact on your images. So you don't have to do this. You can really do small, simple things like this and still get a lot of benefit from, from printing at home and enjoying your images. Because well, let's face it, we all spend a lot of time waiting for computers to do stuff. The other thing is, it's difficult. There's a lot to learn. You've got to learn about color spaces, profiling, calibration, paper types. The list goes on and on and on. But printing doesn't necessarily have to be difficult. It's like anything in photography. Um, when I first started out, that, that video there that you saw discovering the joy of printing, I unboxed a printer. I put the cartridges in, I loaded up Canon's own print software, Print Studio Pro. I used Canon's own photo paper. No, no, one, no one's listening. Um, and, I, and essentially, because I had all the color pro, I had all the paper profiles in there already, I just put the paper in and hit print. I was, I was running an auto, essentially, is what I was doing. And I still got very good results. I was a little bit ahead of the game, I think, because I already had a calibrated monitor. I think one of the real common mistakes that um, happen with prints is that they often come out too dark. Um, and what generally happens is when you get a laptop or you've got a new monitor, those brightness settings are set to nuclear. So you know, they're really, really bright. We really need to get that turned right down, right down to the, so it looks almost dark. It'll look almost strange to you. You think, well, oh, I, I can't work like that. But your eyes become adjusted. And using a simple uh, device like a, like a spider or a color monkey, um, they, they can do a bit of a hardware calibration for your monitor as well. And just with those two very small steps, you'll find that your, the accuracy of your prints comes out um, a lot better. Um, so yeah, there is, a lot, there is a lot to learn, but it doesn't have to necessarily be difficult. You can make life quite easy for yourself. Um, obviously, I do some videos on my, on my YouTube channel, which can help out. So I think one of the ones I've got there is uh, about the photo speeds profile on surface. So if you find a stock of paper that you want, um, they offer a free service where you just print off a test page, send it off to them, it's super quick, they come back and they send you a custom ICC profile, which is mapped specifically to your printer and to your um, paper, the paper type that you send away. That gives you almost fully accurate results. You, I, I've never found any difference, just been in this. It's really easy, dead simple. The other thing is, there's lots of help available online. Photo Speed have got a Facebook group called Tips and Tricks. Uh, so if you're on Facebook, it's well worth checking out. Uh, they've got really good support in there and the guys will um, get back to you very, very quickly. It's quite an active community on there now. 
Sorry, always talking to thirsty work. Okay, the other thing you could do is say, well, I'll just get a lamp to do it. Why, why, why would I even bother getting a printer at home? I'll send them off. Well, that's the reason I used to use as well. And you know how many images I got printed via a lab? That one. That, that, that was it. That's all, that's all I ended up printing. There was always a reason not to send my image to a lab to get it printed. Oh, I can't quite afford it this month. I've got to pay for postage and packaging. That image isn't quite good enough. I'll wait till I've got three or four images. Just, I just never ended up printing. Um, no, th this one's a bit different. This is, this is probably one of the reasons why you might want to use a lab. This is obviously New York Skyline. Um, that's, that's an HD metal print. That's something I can't do at home. Um, if I wanted to print bigger, uh, for example, my Pixima Pro 10 S only prints A3+. Plus. So if I wanted to go to A2, I'd have to send that away to a lab. Or is, uh, they've been trying to get me to buy a, a ProGraph 1000, but I don't think that's happening today. Um, so that, and maybe if you're doing large quantities, but if you're printing at home, large quantities isn't, isn't really something you're probably going to consider. So yeah, there are some, still some circumstances where you might want to use a lab, um, but on the whole, you'll, you'll still print more often. You'll get more satisfaction uh, from doing it yourself. So we're going to get to the, the kind of nub of the reason why I think you should be printing at home. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer of this. That I think that you know, if you, if you print your work, your photography will improve. So this is this is why I was kind of talking about. You don't have to be printing for a gallery. It doesn't have to be exhibition quality. There are still things you can learn from printing your work, regardless of how you feel uh, or, or what the. Uh, where you're going to put that final output. So whether it's on your wall or on your desk, it doesn't matter. It's all about getting viewing time with, with your images, avoiding that digital archive. Because I think a lot, a lot of people, we go out, we shoot our images, or, or, or shoot in the studio, however we do it, and uh, we process our images, we get all very excited about it, share them on social media. It's something, it's something I do. And we have conversations with the people that follow us, and there's quite a bit of attraction and excitement. We all feel quite happy about it. And then a day passes and a couple of days pass. And after a week, it's kind of forgotten about. I mean, how often, when was the last time you actually went onto your Instagram feed or your Flickr feed or whatever it was and actually went back and really looked at the photographs that you were producing? It doesn't happen very often. I think unless you're uh, maybe in a camera club where you've got a competition or you're going to enter one of the, the, the bigger competitions, you don't really go back and look at your, your photographs that often. And if you're not going back, or well, you're only going back once a year. If you're not looking at your photographs, how are you going to how are you going to learn from it? And I think this is the, the real importance for me about about printing at home, because whether you have them in a nice display like that, or on that picture ledge, or you've just got a bunch of ten by fifteens around your desk, you'll spend more time looking at your your photographs. It's amazing how much spare time you've almost got just by by walking about and waiting for things to happen. And by looking at your your photographs, you'll start to look at them a bit more critically. So you'll start saying, well, yeah, I quite like that picture, but once I've maybe stepped to the left or pointed the camera down a bit. Um, and also, you maybe look at, I've, I've often found this, I've looked at an image I actually thought was quite good and I was quite happy with it, but the more time I spent with it, maybe the more problems I found with it, uh, maybe I should, like I said, I should have adjusted. And it's, it's worked the other way as well. And this is why I mentioned earlier that I print some of my not so good images, even the ones I don't sh share on social media. Because I spend time looking at them and I actually look, I see some of the, the, the qualities of that photograph that I maybe hadn't spotted before. So it's all about getting that, that viewing time and, and not letting your photograph disappear into a digital archive. Your, 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 your composition will improve and I think your photography will improve just by spending more time looking at, looking at your photographs. The other thing I've um, also found that, that happens by looking at my photographs, it's also starting to change the way I shoot when I'm actually out in the field as well. So. When you're on Instagram, it tends to be quite a sequential thing. You do one picture, you post it. But when you start looking at your work, as uh, your photographs almost as a, as a body of work, or as a small collection of pictures on your desk, you start thinking about how can I make a series of pictures. So I'm now finding that when I'm out on location, I might take three different photographs of roughly the same location to see if I can build them into, into a series of pictures, something that can maybe be dis displayed. So it, it will not only improve, it will improve your composition, but also the way you think about your photographs. Um, one of my favorite things to do, I call it instant print. Now this is, this is something you definitely can't do with a lab. So I took this, this picture, this is a um, great staple tool. Yes, yes it is great staple tool. No it's not, yes it is. 
Neil, it's a great staple. Great mister. I can't remember. Great. I always get them muddled up. It's a great staple for I'm sure of it. Anyway, um, didn't get quite as much snow as I wanted that day. Um, but what I really enjoyed was I went out that morning and took that photograph and then came straight home, edited it and made a print. And it was just like a really satisfying experience that it just didn't, um, I was able to create something physical for my work that I'd already done that morning. And you just can't get that with a lab, um, but you can do if you're, if you're printing at home. And if you're doing printing at home and you're uh, uh, doing instant print, you will find that you will print more often. So this is a thumbnail from a video that I did about creating a home gallery. <laughs> um, so, and, and I created this like small, those are those picture ledges that you can see, uh, and I was able to create a gallery. So you, you will end up printing more often. Oh. The other thing that will happen is you'll learn the craft. So as I, as I said earlier, some of the, the challenges, there are challenges with, with printing, and you can make it, uh, you, you can learn as much of that craft or as little as that craft as, as possible. Like when I started out printing, I was using the Canon software with the Canon papers, and I didn't really need to learn anything. I was just good to get a nice print. Uh, here you can see I've been learning how to um, mount my print, as you can see there. To the richness of the, of the photographic process, it's nice to know that I've got a skill set that extends not only from the, the digital world, but into the physical world as well. And as a, as a result of learning the craft, you will never be short of a Christmas present to annoy a relative with. Um, given the gift of photography, once you have a printer, honestly, you can, you can badger your relatives uh, with prints and, uh, instead of socks. So this is a, a print that I gave away to um, the person's cottage that I rented in, in, in the Isle of Harris. I did a little bit of packaging there. And for me, though, I, it, was, it, was, it was really satisfying because not only did I know that I, I planned that adventure, I went there, I took that picture, I processed it, I printed it, I packaged it, I sent it to them, and now someone's got it hanging up in their home. It was immensely satisfying, and it's about, for me, it's been about enriching that uh, photographic experience uh, and the way I look at my photography. I also did another uh, print similarly packaged, and I sent it to a relative, and absolutely no interest in photography at all but they liked the picture that I took. And the comment they sent me back, an email that says, well, yeah, I really liked this image and I saw it on your website and I thought it looked really good. But it just looks absolutely amazing in print. And I thought that was that, that really kind of caught me caught me off guard because I didn't expect a, maybe a non-photographer person to appreciate the value of that print. So I was really kind of taken aback and, and, and quite happy about that. But um, you don't necessarily have to have that photographic eye and, and critically look at it. But people will appreciate your work more if it's in physical form. But again, you don't have to be sending it to relatives. You can, just, again, just leave a line about the house and, and have conversations with the, about people that come over and visit. Okay, so what's the most important reason to print? Well, for me, I think photographs just look better in print. Um, you've seen quite a few of these photographs up on the screen there that are on the print. And I'm a firm believer that they just look better. No, I think no matter what size you're printing them off and not what, no matter what printer, they just look better. And it's, it's, it's a very worthwhile experience. This image here, this is one of the ones that I've got printed there in the middle. This is of Dawlish Warren Beach again. This is after the beach management scheme. I think they're, they're quite as nice to as new groins. Um, but it was a nice, uh, nice morning, obviously. Really spectacular sunrise. Um, and but you know I've all, I've always liked that image. It was one of my favourite images that I took uh, last year. But for me, I just think it look it looks better in print. Um, it just is a independent what paper you pick. It just comes to life. Uh, so I do encourage you once I finish talking um, to go over there and you can pick up the prints as well and have a closer look. I don't mind. Um, and uh, I think you'll agree that it just it just looks looks better. Probably one thing I should note about this image, talking of equipment and expense. A uh, few of you will know I shoot with a, a Nikon D850. That image there, that wasn't taken with a D850, that was taken with a Nikon D80. So, and I took that last year, so that's a camera that's 12 years old. Uh, I think it was, I think it's a 10 megapixel camera, but it's, I was using a wide angle lens, so the time I did a bit of correction and straightened the angles and cropped it a little bit, it was down to about six and a half megapixels. Um, but I can still create an A3 image that size. So don't worry about the fact that I, you know, I'm not shooting for gallery and I don't have the world's best digital SLR. None of that really matters. But what's important is you're taking images and you're printing them off. 
um, the, the, you can still get immense quality from even the cameras that are maybe you know over over ten years old. I think that's really important. So I, I really um, I'm coming up to the end. I'm going to open it up to, for questions soon. But hopefully, by talking about some of these things, hopefully you're going to be inspired, Gareth. I want I want to hear that you've been using your printer after this. Um, but yeah. I think you don't need to have the best. You don't need to have the best camera. You certainly don't need to have the best printer. But like say if you've got like an office jet, as long as it's got some colour ink, buy some of the manufacturer's paper and just get printing. Print them ten by fifteen. Print them small. Put them all over the place. Um, you, you'll, you'll start to enjoy, and your photography will start to improve. Right. Coming up to the end now. So, um, if you want to find out a bit more about me, there's my website address. There's a contact form there as well, so you can. And drop me a message. I've got a blog up there as well, which I uh, post to every week. Got my YouTube channel as well, so if you want to take a look at that, and I'm across all the, the different social media channels as well. So, I've probably done enough talking for just now. Does anyone have any questions? Excellent. One thing you didn't mention was that when it's printed, actually you've frozen it whereas what people are seeing on their own digital uh, equipment may be a completely different color rendering and things like that but you've got it how you want it my question is um uh, when you it may be something to do with your landscape photography i noticed you pre you bought pre-cut mounts all your pictures here are in the same relative yeah. shape aren't they mm -hmm. three by two or whatever it's perhaps the size of the sensor i don't know um, i can't uh, i do a lot of printing every image of mine is cropped differently what am i doing wrong i can't buy pre-cut ones because i i work out the image that yeah. i decide where it's going to finish top and bottom and then i cut them out okay yeah good question good point actually um i don't know if i've cheated <laughs> um it just happens that most of the images, well, all the images that I picked did happen to be the same same ratio. So yeah, my, my, my sense is that that particular ratio, so it was nice and easy. But these aren't pre-cut in, in the sense that, that they are bought online. They're, they're bought from a company called Picture Frames Express, and uh, they have a designer, better designer software. So you can specify the exact opening, um, and it doesn't really matter what ratios. I made life simple for myself because I was buying 10 of them, uh, so I kind of, yeah. It was a bit of a choice, just a bit of luck because all the, the images were the, were the same. But yeah, um, these are these are custom made, but they just haven't to look like maybe they've been bought off the bought off the shelf. So yeah, picture frame press, they'll, they'll do all sorts of custom ones for you. You can go to the nth degree and that kind of stuff. In there. Any other questions? Where did I buy more from? Ink. I get my ink from Amazon. So in case you're wondering, um, so it's a Canon Pixma Pro 10S. It takes 10 cartridges. Um, I buy genuine ink, I don't, I don't buy third-party ink. And each cartridge uh, is roughly about £9.90 something. So if I was to do all of them at the same time, it's about £100, but they never ever run out at the same time. So the thing with the Canon, the, some of the differences maybe between the Pixima rate, I know more about the Canon printers than the Epson, so I do apologize, but uh, in the ProGraph systems that you get, they have much better intelligent management in them. So they can actually, you can actually tell how much your ink cost, and they can actually assign a cost to each print that knows exactly how much ink. I don't know that, I don't, you can't get that with the, the Pixima system, so I have to roughly estimate. So on their website, they've got a list of uh, the inks and it gives you a, an average yield of how much uh, how many prints you can expect to make from each tank. So approximately, a, a print like that probably cost about £1.50, round about, round about there, and probably about another £1.50 for, for the paper. Um, but yes, yeah, so about £9.90 for the, for the tanks, but uh, Vince was telling me on, on the, the ProGraph system, if you can afford to buy the printer, the, the running costs are about half that in terms of ink. So. Have you ever tried the what? No. I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit too cautious for that um, I, t I tend to I tend to buy native products from the vendors themselves I've, I've never tried though the, if you are interested in using third party eggs or particularly a feed system as well um, I know the guys in full speed they, they sell those types of systems uh, they've got some good blog articles on on their their blogs uh, their, their, their blog 
I forgot to mention actually when I was talking about the complexities of printing and looking for help, they've got a really good blog uh, section on their website and they cover a lot of the, this kind of this kind of stuff about using different inks and different prints and stuff like that. So there's a lot of help there available. Lots of jargon busting articles like what's the difference between sRGB and Adobe RGB and stuff like that. So if you're looking for answers, that's a good place to go as well. <laughs> yes. Right. So the, the question is, um, which, which, basically, which software am I using to, to, to print my images? There's a number of different ways you can do it. Uh, certainly in the Canon world, anyway. So I can print natively using light. I do all my editing, virtually 99% of it in Lightroom. Very rarely do I go into Photoshop. Um, but I would imagine Photoshop's quite similar to, to Lightroom. So you can use the native interface uh, that Lightroom gives you. Uh, but Canon also provide something for their Pixma range upwards. They provide a bit of software uh, called uh, Print Studio Pro. This is a plug-in to Lightroom, and then I think it's under automation in Photoshop. I've always used the Canon Print Studio Pro, but there's no reason. It, 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 it's not going to make any difference to the quality or how your prints look, which one you use. I just use it because that's the first bit I used, because when I first started out, I thought I'd go down the easiest path. Um, but it won't make won't make any won't make any difference to the, to the final output. As long as you set select in your color profile, your print ICC profile, um, and you can set the paper stuff, whatever interface you want to use, whatever makes your life easier. Um, I've just never really delved into the uh, the Lightroom interface. I'll, I'll stick to what I know. Right, so there's a question about uh, crop ratios and do a crop before or after uh, or during when I'm sending it to the printer. So I do all my cropping in, in post-processing. As you can see from the work here, as this gentleman's pointed out, they all tend to be the same the same ratio. Um, the only other kind of ratio of, of, of photograph a print is, is panoramic images. Because they've got a very specific paper size, I tend to actually crop my images with the paper size in mind in that case. Most of the A3 pages and A4 pages and A3, these are, these are actually A3+, plus, so it's just marginally bigger than A3. They just happen to sit nicely on, on the paper, and I can print full bleed as well without having to, to crop. So they sit nicely, I don't have to do any sort of cropping, but I do, when I'm printing the panoramic images, I will crop. I've got a custom crop ratio set in, in Lightroom that matches the ratio of, of that particular paper. So I do, I do. that's the only kind of thing I do when I've got what prints in mind. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. David. Ah, yes, that's a very good question. So yeah, this is, this is a question I asked myself. It's a question I asked myself several times um, when, I, when I was learning how to print this. Like, which paper type goes with which photograph? I think everyone probably asked that question. This may sound like a bit of a cop-out answer, but there is no one paper type for one particular type of image. It's, a lot of it is down to experimentation. <laughs> Um, personally, I just I, I I I use probably three different papers. I've got a Cotton 305, a Burita 300, and the new Legacy Gloss. And I'll give you an example. That image there of of, of Book of Life I've printed three times in three different papers. And personal choice, they all look really good, but they all look slightly different as well. Um, but there's no right and there's no wrong one. Um, that, that's printed on cotton 305, that's a map. I think I'm going to frame that picture, but I'm probably going to frame it using the, the new Legacy Gloss because I just like the way it looks better. So when it comes to when it comes to picking the paper, I think it's just a matter of, of experimenting. That's why those test packs are, are particularly good because you can you know, get an A4 page and, and, just, and just print it off. Does that answer the question, David? Thank you. Right, good. Anyone else? Last chance? Queen? Oi! Do I do I print in black and white? I could, <laughs> if I had any black and white images. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, I think. I, did, did you see the beginning? Of the, there was a yeah, it was terrible. Um, the the additional one of my black and white images it wasn't a landscape photograph. It's uh, some live music stuff. I just don't have that that eye. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, I can't quite. I, I do have a couple of black and white images. 
that I'm quite happy with. But I don't think necessarily they were intended to be black and white. They just happened to convert quite nicely. So, um, so the answer to your question is no, I don't print in black and white. However, however, I, I probably will. Um, I was out with a fellow vlogger, this man here that's doing my video for me. He took me on a bit of a street photography adventure in, in Birmingham last night. I'm just, just trying my little hand at that. So there's going to be a lot of black and white images, so I think I'm probably going to print some of those. Um, I, might, I might even pick up a new paper stock myself, actually, just to give that a try. Um, but no, that, that's why there's no black and whites there. Uh, I just don't really take that much in the way of black and white landscapes. Any more questions? Um, if there's no more questions, please do come over and have a look at the prints. You can pick them up. It's not, it's not a problem. They're not fragile. Have a closer look at them. Tell me your thoughts if you want, as long as they're positive. I don't want to hear any negative comments. Um, but yeah, by all means, pick them up and, and have a closer look at them. I've got, I know what all the paper types are as well. Um, so if you want to know what, what paper type a particular image is, uh, I'm more than happy to tell you. Any more questions then? Right, so just to wrap up then. Good timing, actually. Um, so there's a lot. There's still another couple of talks on this afternoon. Um, I'll be here to, to, to do Master of Ceremony, so I'll be introducing Matt Hardy in about 20 minutes. Is that the rain? Hail, crikey. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'll speak up then. Um, and at uh, 2.30, there's Joe Cornish as well. So Joe's doing a bit of an extended talk, and I'll be here to help field the Q&A session with Joe. So uh, please come along to see Matt and Joe. And like I say, if you're here for the rest of the week as well, absolutely stale lineup of uh, talkers as well. So. Yeah. But yeah, please have a look at the images in there. Thank you very much. Thank you.